All right, so I am back at with one of your guys' favorite projects here. And today, in this video, I'm going to be getting this thing running with an engine in it. And you're probably asking, how do I know that? Because it's very far from that. Well, I'm not posting this video until this thing runs. Maybe not drives, but it will run. So the first thing I want to do is I want to air up all the tires on it. I already got a strap on it. I'm going to tow this thing up to the house. I'm going to power wash it because I've never really cleaned it that well. And I think it's time to do that. So let's cut back to when this thing is all nice and clean. All right, so this thing's cleaned off. All the tires are aired up. It's looking better. Um, I don't know what I showed you in the last video. I know I did steering. I don't know if I showed you I took the floorboard off and I welded in this really thick piece of angle iron. A, to strengthen up the frame, and B, to give me something to bolt a mount to for the steering shaft. I'll get more into that later, but before I put the, just slap a motor in it, I want to do some stuff, or well, get it pretty much ready to drive. So I made a little list. The first thing we got to do is weld up my steering shaft. That's right down here. I got to weld this together, because if you remember, I think in the last video I tacked it together, and I was messing with it one day, and then the tack welds broke. So I gotta re-weld that so I can get that length all dialed in. Then I need to build a mount to mount this so it's not flopping all over the place. Then I need to reattach my floorboard, but I think before I do that, I'm going to finish this control arm because before I welded it to one length and it was a little too short and I had a little bit of camber, a little bit too much. I cut it and re-welded it so it's pretty straight now. because you can see, that tire's pretty much dialed in. So I can build another one for that on this side to come meet it down there. And on this side, I'm not going to finish building the other side because I still want to cut and lengthen that one. So we got to do that. And then I'll finish that side. Also, I want to paint everything too before I just slap a motor in it because it'd be a lot easier to paint before the motor's in. I would also have to make this a little better. This another steering shaft mount. I think we built that. I don't know, last video, two videos ago on this thing. And then, once I paint it, I can slap a motor in it, and hopefully we can hear how good that thing runs. I can't wait to hear that. So I'm going to weld my steering shaft in, and then I'll show you what we're looking like. All right, so I got the Craftsman attached to the ceiling, and I've been working, getting the steering shaft ready to be welded in solid. Before I just went in and just got it all welded in super solid, I wanted to mount my steering rack in tight so it doesn't move at all and get everything all dialed in. And before, I just had the two carriage bolts like that that went around it. But they kind of pulled it in a weird way and tried kind of bent it a little bit. And that bound up the steering shaft and allowed me not to move the tires. So I put in some spacers and some other pieces of clamp in here. So the steering shaft kind of sits off the frame a little bit. I know it looks like a mess, but it's solid. And I adjusted the angles of some of the U-joints to make them a little better. And right now I think everything's happy, so I'm gonna break the welder out, weld this all up, and then we can get started on my bearing idea, which I'll show you guys what I have in mind for that. And for that, I made this little thing. This is a piece of angle iron here that comes to another piece of angle iron down and over to another piece of angle iron down and over to this pipe. This pipe I bought a while ago. It's a piece of exhaust. And it's supposed to connect two pieces of the same size pipe, but the middle piece I hammered a bearing into, like the middle piece where it's crimped. I hammered a bearing into there because it fit tightly. And it comes up and over. And I drilled two holes in this really thick angle iron. Like that is some thick stuff. It's not going anywhere. And it comes down right to here to hold the steering shaft in. And this works very well. I want to put some sheet metal screws in this pipe, like the one here, one here, and two on the other side to hold the bearing in so it can't come out. I feel like that'll be a good idea. And if the sheet metal screws ever come out, I was thinking I could use even small nuts and bolts. I don't know if I have them here, so that's why I'm just gonna use sheet metal screws for now. But yeah, the next step is I want to finish the control arm on the one side I was telling you about. 
and I'll cut up some angle iron, some flat stock, and I'll show you that all done. All right, so a little bit's happened since the last clip. I completely finished this control arm. I made it, rounded off all the edges. Everything's how it's gonna be besides paint, but it works good. And also I took the dash plates out. I took the whole wiring harness out. And that's because I wanted to re really weld up the steering mount here. And I should have bent this plate more back more. But I forgot about that before I welded it in. But either way, I think I'll be able to make a, an odd spacer for this. And also, now, this thing is pretty much ready to be painted. The last thing I'm going to do, I think I'm going to do, there might be more, is I got my floorboard back out here. I need to re-drill the holes through this angle iron of where this floorboard went. I think it's just one, two, three, four. Actually, this one's already good. So actually it's just the two the back two here. And this one I already started drilling it. But I guess I didn't have the right drill bit or something. And then I gotta find some bolts. Bolt this thing back on here. Because the carriage bolts, I'm not using them again. They're just a pain to remove. So I'll drill out these two holes and then we can start tearing this thing down to paint i'm gonna worry about that control arm later on about cutting and rewelding it and then building the other one because it's not necessary to drive it so i'm hoping i can at least paint this thing the frame tonight and maybe prep some of all the parts like the control the lower control arms and stuff the steering rod thing i don't even know what all this stuff's called i'm exhausted I've been out here all day, but we're getting progress, getting stuff done. So I'll drill them two holes out and I'll be back. All right, so the last thing you guys saw me do was I stripped this whole suspension system down. That's because I wire brushed this whole thing. I cleaned it off with rubbing alcohol and I painted it all flat black. I started painting some of the control arms and stuff on this side. And tomorrow I'm going to paint, finish painting them, paint this stuff, paint everything else that needs to be painted. And I'm going to try and get the suspension all back together. Also, what I have done is I brought in the engine I'm throwing in here. It's a little dusty, but it's a 17 horsepower with stiffer valve springs, better valve retainers, and my personal favorite, I believe the 26 millimeter four-wheeler carb that just barely clears and it's going to look stock pretty much except for that air filter. I like it. All right, so a huge amount of progress has been done on this Craftsman. I threw the hood on it just to get a look at it. But I got all the suspension back together. Everything's painted. This side is completely done. This other side over here, I painted the lower control arm. And this upper one, I thought I had to lengthen it. But now that I got the tire on here, it looks pretty good. But I'll ride it a little bit, make sure that's where it's going to stay. And I make sure I don't have to lengthen this control arm before I go ahead and clean it up and paint it and build another one. Also, I got the motor in. It's all bolted down. This big old 17 and a half horse. I got a nice, pretty magnesium bike brake for my gas pedal this time versus that really crappy plastic one. I ordered a brand new throttle cable for it because this one, the end, is broken off. And I had like an electrical stake on it and it was just bolted to the old pedal. But since I got this new pedal, I kind of want it hooked up a better way. So now I'm working on the electrical system. I got a pretty much brand new solenoid in there. I ordered this. And I took one of the switches out and I put a push button in there to start it. So I got to get that wired up. I got the ignition switch and the old kill switch all removed. Everything that was on the dash is removed. I'm going to also cut out a square for that piece to go on. And I'm going to follow this line. And then just have to do three more cuts. Then I'll get that wired in and hopefully we can start it for a battery. I'm going to see if this interstate battery from 2015 will be enough juice to start this thing for now. 375 cranking amp. It came out of the GT5000 from a while ago. 
and it couldn't start that big cola command oh, but maybe it'll start this we'll see if not i have some other batteries we can try or i'll have to buy one so now i'm going to get that ignition switch installed and then we can see this one crank all right so this thing's looking way better i got all the suspension back together i wired up my all my switches and my charging ports i ended up putting just a regular switch here for the kill switch and then i got a push button and i did put the interstate battery in it it's getting charged overnight the one thing uh that's kind of a problem right now is i did start it briefly and for an exhaust i just have this it was on the old motor it went to a stock muffler down here but i put that muffler i think on the husk of honor actually and sold it so we're just gonna run a straight pipe for a little while until i can build something but the biggest problem i'm having right now is this motor won't crank it'll feel like it feels like the valves are out of adjustment so i put them in spec it did nothing i tightened it so there was no clearance did nothing right now i have it set so the exhaust valve just kind of always open a little bit and i mean i couldn't really get it to turn still so then i'm thinking starter so this is the starter that was on there and it cranked over the old 14 and a half force pretty well but granted that was about let's say two years ago and it's just been sitting since then it never was the best starter it always made noises and it wasn't the best so then i got this starter off the motor that was on the hydrostatic snapper that 15 horse which is actually the original motor from this this starter i bought brand new from a lot for that motor but i i can see it got hot the plastics kind of melted where that nut is right there where it goes into the starter so i'm wondering if this starter's messed up too well that's really these are the two best starters i got right now so i think i'm gonna go online and buy a new starter so now that's what i'm gonna be waiting on tomorrow after the battery charges overnight i'll try it one more time but if not we're just gonna buy a starter and hope that fixes it and also in the meantime my throttle cable should be here so i can hook that all up i also put a different spark plug in it but that didn't help at all and it ran for about i'd say 10 seconds i tried to rev it up and it backfired really bad and then shut off i'm wondering if i might have snapped a flywheel key also but even still with the flywheel key snap it should be able to turn over without hitting compression and stopping and even just like when it's free spin with the spark plug out it really wasn't spinning that fast even with the big jump starter hooked up so i think we got a starter problem so i'll be back once i have a new starter and by then the throttle kill will probably be all hooked up too all right so i've been doing a lot of digging on this thing so first off, the flywheel key was definitely sheared. It sheared, the flywheel shifted. That was part of the problem. It would fire at the wrong time and kind of spit it back a little bit. The other part was that starter I had on it before from the 15 horsepower was not strong enough to spin this thing over. So I put the old starter back on, which has not been doing great. It's been sparking and making all kinds of noises, but it's barely enough to get this thing to spin over. Also, I got my throttle cable in. That is super nice. Uh, the cable had like kind of the wrong amount of cable sticking out because this is really not what it's for. So underneath this tape, I have a little pipe that I could fit over the cable and then I pinch the end so the, it would stop the cable from going into the pipe again. And that acts as a spacer to take up the extra room on the cable. I don't know how that's gonna work, but at the moment, it seems to be pretty promising. Also, the spark plug I had in it was I don't know if I fouled it from that couple seconds I was running it or what, but it still wasn't great. Also, I just adjusted the valves again, just to double check that. But now, this thing spins over, the throttle's all hooked up. I think you guys want to hear this thing run. I know it doesn't look great right now, but I think it'll run. Let's see. So let me know what you guys think is going to happen. Is it going to start after sitting for years in a, in a tent when i say years i mean only like two years but that's still kind of a lot or a lawnmower i guess 
Also, I don't know if I told you guys. Let me show you something real quick, what I did. On my uh, switches here, before I had power going to all of them, and this there was a voltmeter in here, and it was on constantly. I didn't like that, so I made the power go to this switch, and we turn this switch on. You get power everywhere. Then you can turn the headlights on. You see the spark there. For your starter. But if I turn that off, nothing happens. Well, the killer switch, you can, that still works on and off. So if you're running, you have a low battery, I guess you could turn your dash off and then, I mean, to save a little bit of battery. And eventually, I wanna connect this to some gauges over here. So that'll turn the lights off on the gauges and not give power to them. But for now, I'm gonna turn that on, put, turn that on, the ignition on, kill switch on. I'm gonna see if this is gonna start. So this starter, the gear doesn't go up on its own, so I kind of have to uh, give it some encouragement here. That should be good enough. Let's see what happens here. That's very anticlimactic. That starter might have bit the dust. Am I getting power to the starter? Yeah, the starter's getting power. Salton is not happy. Let me see if I can build a starter real quick for this thing, because the one I ordered still isn't here, and I think it's going to be here tomorrow, or the next day. And that's really no fun. Alright, so what I've just done is I've taken the starter apart that was brand new off the 15 horse. I polished up, I don't know, whatever these things are, so hopefully the, the I think it's the brushes, that's what they're called, can make a better contact right there. I'm going to put some oil on this end, even though it spins good right now. I'll put some more on there, put some grease in the bottom here, slap it all back together, stick it on there, and hopefully everything works out fantastic. That's the plan. We'll see what happens. All right, so that starter's all back together. I feel like one of those Indians you see on TikTok or YouTube uh, making your reman starters all day, just in the dirt. But either way, I think it might be good enough to start it. So without further ado, I'm going to get on it like I did before. Starter's on 200 cranking amps, so that's engine start, along with whatever's left in this battery, which is probably not much. Let's see. does it drive like really down a trail will it drive and not fall apart and that's the question you guys are gonna have because that's it for this video it's been a long journey to get here and we are not done yet I can tell you that right now but this thing's awesome 
And it still needs a lot of work, but we're getting there. Slowly but surely, we're getting there. I really thank you guys for watching and staying around this long. And if you haven't seen the other videos, give them a watch. They're pretty good. I can promise you this, in the next video, I don't care what it takes, we're going to be driving this thing. Not very far, but at least down a trail. And it might break. It might blow up. I don't know. But whatever it takes, it's going to be driving down a trail in the next video. Next video. Not the next video on this. The next video. So, I don't... That might be a couple weeks, so... I'll try and get it out as soon as I can. But thank you guys for watching. I will see you in the next video on this.